progressed in camp the last uh, last couple days? Because you know the first day you seemed like you guys were incredibly far away from being ready to play in a football game. I think those were the cards. No, I think you're. I think you're mistaking. I said it's hard <laughs> to judge how far you are from playing in a football game when you haven't yet put on shoulder pads gotcha. and actually right. Yeah. So that's mischaracterization. Mischaracterization. <laughs> No, I mean, it's day four camp. Obviously, it's been hot here, right? Uh, so guys are getting acclimated to the weather. Obviously, uh, you know, you get to put on pads after two days, right? You have full pads next is the next progression. And so uh, it takes a little time to get your body in condition for that, right? Football shape is different than meeting a running test, you know, on report day at camp. It just it just is. Every football player knows that. So I've, I've appreciated the effort we're given. All right, I think we try to be try to be physical. By all means, we do have a long way to go. We got a lot of ways to improve, but that's probably every team in America right now after day four. You've got, um, I know you love competition in camp or spring practice, whenever it is. You love guys pushing each other. And I know it's still early in camp, but it seems like that back and forth competition at Sam Linebacker between JP and John has continued in the early stages of camp and, and, and both those guys pushing each other. Yeah, those guys come out to work, right? They've done a nice job. Obviously, they got, I mean, replacing Tyrus Wheat and obviously all the different hats he wore in our defense the last couple of years is going to be a, a challenge. Um, but they've certainly come to work, right? And we're throwing everything at them. Uh, you know, the thing to keep in mind, too, is they're not just battling each other for that job. They're battling They're battling the defensive ends for are we better off in a, a an odd defense or are we better off in an even defense, right? I mean, you, know, you got to get your best 11 players on the field. So if we can get four D linemen who bring a, give us more than playing with a Sam linebacker, all right, that's, that's on the table, too. Speaking of competition, I mean, those guys in the secondary, losing a couple of them headlined by Forbes. What do you think of kind of that group so far through through a couple of days, and what are you expecting to see from them? Yeah, you know, first couple of days, obviously, you don't have a pass rush, right, because you can't hit and really rush back. So uh, I was pretty nervous, right? I mean, we got we to gotta replace a lot of snaps back there between Forbes and all the amazing things he did, right? But really, I probably didn't sing their praises enough. Colin Duncan and Jalen Green in the safety position, you know, Jackie Matthews. We lost all three all three safeties who played probably the majority of the reps. You got Sean coming back, but he's played a bunch of reps too, so that's good to have some veteran presence there. But yeah, we, we are inexperienced in the back end and that is extremely concerning as a coach. Uh, you don't you don't sleep very well at night if you're a secondary coach or myself right now because the fast way to lose lose a game is big plays, explosive plays through the air, right? Uh, and so we are having to develop some experience and quality of play in a hurry because Teams are better at throwing and catching the football than ever before in the history of football right now. Right? It's getting aired out and spread out all over the field. So uh, we got a young secondary who's going to get challenged early and often. What kind of advice would you kind of give guys like that, you know, that are, if, if you're worried about it and wanting them to be, you know, ready in, in a short period of time, is there any kind of advice or, or anything like that you give them? I take your D-line, I take your pass rush out to dinner every now and then, right? Make sure they're <laughs> ready to go because that's your, probably your best friend as a secondary guy is a good pass rush. Sticking on the lines of competition with uh, wide receivers who are maybe borderline starter, borderline you know, sec- uh, backup guys, what are you looking for for them to sort of maybe break through that that starting wall and, and, and crack the, the starting line? Yeah, well, I think our officer coaches obviously do a good job of knowing what every guy's strength is, right? And so you can kind of individualize certain plays or schemes for them, you know? Uh, some guys are better point of attack, right? And create movement in the run game. Other guys maybe want a backside cutoff. Some guys give you more in certain areas of the pass game than others, right? And so, uh, I mean, obviously competition, if you got a well-rounded guy, it makes it great, right? We got a couple well-rounded guys, but everyone's got their strengths and weaknesses, and so we're figuring out that. And I would repeat the same thing that I said about the same linebackers. All those tight ends are under the same challenge. Well, they're they're competing with either the fourth receiver or maybe a second running back in the game, right? I mean, if, we're, if you're best with four wideouts on the game going 10 personnel, you're gonna do that. If you're best in 20 personnel and putting a second running back, right? You can run all those same run schemes with another running back and get to the same pass concepts. So and that, that's the challenge in front of all of us as coaches right now. You're four days in, you can't make final decisions about who your best 11 are, but every day you get a little bit more info and a little bit more film to, you know, to make that evaluation. We're trying to figure out who the best personnel is on the field to give us the best chance to, to win. Along those lines, at wide receiver, um, Freddie Roberson got here last month, and obviously he's played a lot of college snaps, but mm-hmm. how is he adapting to, to this level so far? Oh, he's doing good, yeah, I mean, he's doing well. I had a little bit of a 
you know, I think he got stepped on his toe or something yesterday that I think probably most guys would have would have happily took today off. And he was he ran out there and said, "No, nah, coach, I'm going." So you certainly appreciate that. You like you like tough guys in a receiver room. Uh, I, I think our wideout group's done a good job in general of running routes hard, getting it out of their breaks, and then obviously trying to be a factor in the blocking in the run game too. So that's been good. What's it like to have been having Jaden Wally back? He's been around a, a long time. His leadership is seeing probably every coverage you can see. Just talk about his. Yeah, he, I've seen, he's done. He's done a good job. It seems like every rep I've seen him in, it seems like he's given everything he's got on that particular play, which is uh, easy for some guys to start to sacrifice that effort a little bit at this point in camp, right? It's, it's been hot. It's humid. It, you're, you're tired. Your body's sore. It's easy to kind of just give 85% on a rep, but he seems to always be giving 100%. You know, I mean, he's played a lot of football. I mean, obviously he's going to be a huge factor in what we do offensively. You yeah. obviously have the strong ties to the three three five, but you've mentioned a lot even today about the you know maybe playing some four man front and and things like that. And Coach Turner's talked about that too. When did that become kind of a strong topic of conversation for y'all and defensively? I've talked about that all every year I've been here. Is if it's the best option, we'll do it. Now we've happened to have Tyra Sweet the last couple of years, and so uh, it's played to our strengths to have have three linebackers on the field. You know, I, I didn't get the chance to be here in, in 2018, but I guarantee you, I would have been a, I would have been a four, four down guy that year if I had, you know, those D linemen. So, uh, yeah. Speaking of that too, the linebackers. I mean, you've been a big part too of building that group and a lot of talented guys that are a little bit younger. I mean, what's your thoughts on the guys underneath the Bukies and Jet Johnsons and JP and guys like that? I think they have a great opportunity to look at the guys who are older than them who are playing the majority of snaps and see what it takes physically, mentally, everything to pre get yourself prepared to play at this level and in this league. You know, physically what you have to do, you gotta be big enough, you gotta be strong enough, you gotta be fast enough. And then if you're a linebacker, you're involved in the front, you're involved in the coverage, obviously all the different blitz packages, all right? So that takes a lot of preparation, a lot of stuff just outside the practice field. And uh, right now, those guys have an opportunity to learn from two vets who can mentor them and show them exactly what needs to be done. It's just whether they decide to take that opportunity or not.